All right, so our second topic today is going to take a look at some simple signal controllers that were added within uh, this in 2020. So the motivation behind creating these was just having the ability for users to add some simple traffic controllers without having to use any programming languages such as VAP. And probably best of all is that all of this information is just built in. So we don't have to worry about external files. We don't have to keep track of those RPC files or VAP or PUA files. Um, it's all just included. And as part of this, there were three different controller options that were added. So first we have the two-stage controller, a railway, railway crossing, and pedestrian crossing. So each of these kind of behave in a similar manner. Uh, all of them will have a default signal group defined for the major flow. And this will be for the, the major um, roadway flow for the traffic. And then we'll also have a calling signal group, which will be set up for the minor flow and also for any pedestrians and for the railway. And so what will happen, the default signal group will be set to green and the calling signal group will be red. And then once the calling detector has gotten a request, either from a vehicle or a pedestrian or a train, at that point, the default signal group will be set to red and the calling will get set green. And that will go for either a fixed duration, if we're, if we're looking at just the two-stage controller or the pedestrian controller, or for the railway, until that train has passed through that checkout detector. And then it will just kind of switch back and have the default signal group set green again. So we'll just kind of work in this in this loop throughout the simulation. So all of these can be added within the signal control menu. If you select signal controllers and then select that plus button, And then in here, you can change the type of controller. So you can either select that two-stage, pedestrian, or railway crossing. And all of these are going to have a very similar um, uh, look here. So at the Signal Groups tab, all of these attributes will be shown for each of the different types. So we can change the, um, the signal group number and the name. And then for each of these, we can set up the minimum green time for the signal group, as well as the minimum red time. And then you can add any yellow time that would occur after red, and any yellow time that occurs after green. And we can also change the display type and the actuation type. And for each of these, by default, they will have that default signal group set up and the calling signal group set up. And then we have the clearance time, which will be the kind of the waiting time that occurs after one of the signal groups turns red before the other one is allowed to change. And then uh, these last two options have to do with detectors. Here's where we can set up the port number for that calling group. And again, this will be for either the minor flow or for the railway or the pedestrians. And then here's where we can set the checkout detector port number, which will only be for the railway crossings. So now I'm just gonna go through in more detail kind of how each of these options work and the setup that's re for required for each of them. So as far as the two-stage controller is concerned, um, again, you'll just have your major flow here so you can see that both of these directions are green. And then these will stay green until the minor flow requests um, a call for, for that direction. So in this case, we'll have a detector kind of placed here that where that car is and then once that minimum green time has elapsed for that major flow and we've gone through any of the yellow time and the clearance time then that minor flow will get its call 
So as far as setup is concerned, um, for the major flow, we'll just have to set up the signal heads using that default signal group. And then the minor flow, we'll need to have the signal heads set up to that calling signal group number. And then we'll also have to set up those calling uh, port number detectors. And then if we go on to the railway crossing, in this case, the train will only get green once it's been requested, when it's crossing that calling detector. And it will stay green until the end of the train has passed through that checkout detector. And if there is no request, then the default signal group will just remain green, and the vehicles will be able to travel um, as, as normal. So as far as this setup goes, on the vehicle side, we'll just set up their signal heads there with that default signal group number. And then for the railway, that's going to have a check-in detector defined with that calling port number. And then we'll also have a checkout detector defined with that checkout port number. And it also will have a signal head assigned to that calling signal group. And then as far as the pedestrians go, they will only get green again once they request it, once that detector has been triggered for that calling group. Otherwise, if there is no request, then the default signal group will remain green. And for these components, uh, these again, the vehicles will just need that default signal group set up. And for the pedestrians, they will have a calling signal group set up to that signal head and then have their detectors set up with the calling port number. And then one really nice feature that we have set up in 2020 is defining these pedestrian crossings automatically. So what you can do is just draw a link across your roadway for the pedestrians as you normally would. And then you'll just need to set this to be a pedestrian area. And once that's been set up as a pedestrian link, you can right click on that and just select this add signalized pedestrian crossing option. And that will automatically create all of these objects for us. So we'll get our signal controller created, as well as the signal heads, detectors, and conflict area. And so once this has all been created, then you can go into that signal controller option and edit any of those default times. So let's go ahead and take a look at this little example file here. We have just a, a roadway that kind of incorporates all of these different objects. So here we have a pedestrian crossing. And then we also have a railway crossing. And then three intersections that are going to use those two stage controllers. So I'll just pull up this file here. Um, so again, here's our main network over here on the left hand side and then on the right hand side I've zoomed in to this railway section option so I just wanted to go over um, first how how that railway kind of operates um, both with that check-in detector and checkout detector and for this I'm actually just going to run the simulation in test mode and what test mode is is a, is a way to run just the controller information without putting vehicles onto the network yet. And this will allow us to actually manually trigger different detector actuations so we can see how that controller behaves. So I'll just turn this on first. And I also have the signal times table showing for that railway crossing so that we can see how those signal times change. And you'll notice here first off, um, we're just, we have that default signal group green, so you'll notice that the roadway here has the green signal group and the train is set to red. And so now I'm gonna zoom in here to that checkout check-in detector to kind of mimic the behavior of a train arriving. And here's where you can actually edit that actuation. You can either choose the option through the context menu here, or you can double click on the detector itself to kind of cycle through each of these. So I'm going to turn this to continuous actuation to mimic that train. 
and I'll just continue here. And you'll see here is where we have that detector's been triggered, and you'll notice that the timing changed. So we went through the yellow time here on the default signal group, and then we went through that clearance time, and then that calling signal group picked up uh, the green time. So you'll notice that train here is now set to green. And now I'm going to remove the actuation here at the check-in detector and let that run for a little bit. And you'll notice again that that train still has the green. And then to kind of mimic the train leaving that intersection, again, I'm going to apply that continuous actuation here on that checkout detector. And then I will turn that off to just mimic the train presence leaving. And you'll notice as soon as we do that, that signal will change and the train will be red and then that default signal group for the vehicles switches back to green. So this test mode is a really useful tool just to make sure that your controller is behaving as expected and to see what different um, behavior will occur with those actuations. So I'll just close all this, and I'm just going to restart the simulation so you can see the other elements here. And you'll notice what's really nice is that the initialization for this is really quick. And again, we don't have to worry about any external files because everything is just kind of saved in here internally. And it's really easy to just be able to open up these windows and change some of these default timings here and then kind of kick off another run. But here we've got... Again, that pedestrian crossing here, so you'll see those, once that minimum green time expires for the default signal group, those pedestrians will get to cross. And then for each of our other controllers, we've got two stage controllers set up at each of these intersections. So you can see here that the minor flow will get to go based on that minimum green time. And once that expires, then that it'll go back to the default until the minor movement um, gets another call from those detectors.